Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Rebecca Roberts. And I'm Yochanan El Rome. In our top story, the Israeli cabinet has voted to reject an impending U.S. proposal for the unilateral recognition of a Palestinian state. This vote preempted the release of a White House peace plan that dictates a firm timeline for the establishment of what Israel believes would be yet another Arab terror state, this one within the borders of Israel. The Israeli cabinet firmly rejected the notion and voted to quash the initiative. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu slammed the attempt, saying that it would endanger the existence of the state of Israel. The cabinet issued a unanimous statement saying Israel will continue to oppose unilateral recognition of a Palestinian state, saying such recognition in the wake of the October 7th massacre would be a massive and unprecedented reward to terrorism and would foil any future peace settlement. The Hamas terror group has suffered massive losses as IDF troops have pushed the Iranian-backed fighters into the city of Rafah near the Egyptian border. Despite intense international pressure not to move into the Hamas stronghold, the IDF is ramping up for a major offensive in the southernmost city of the coastal enclave. Israeli sources say the Gaza offensive, which is meant to dismantle Hamas completely, has claimed the lives of 12,000 of the terror group's 30,000 gunmen. Another 1,000 Hamas terrorists were killed inside Israel on October 7th and the days following the savage attack. The IDF has carried out over 31,000 airstrikes in Gaza and Lebanon, as well as raids on Hamas positions in Judea and Samaria. More than 230 Israeli soldiers have been killed in combat operations inside the Gaza Strip. Intelligence sources believe a full-scale military offensive will last for at least another six to eight weeks. Israel's security services are ramping up for the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which begins on March 10th. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has already instructed security teams to create a plan for the hundreds of thousands of Arabs who fled Jerusalem's old city to ascend the Temple Mount during the month-long holiday. Mount Moriah, the site of both Jewish temples, remains under the control of the Islamic Waqf, which heavily restricts non-Muslim access to the holiest site in Judaism and strictly forbids Jews and Christians from praying there. The nation of Hungary boldly stood up in defense of the Jewish state and has prevented a resolution against the IDF from passing in the European Union not once but twice. The EU consensus statement calls for an immediate humanitarian pause in fighting, leading to a permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Jerusalem insists that a ceasefire will allow the Iranian-backed Hamas terror group much-needed time to regroup, rearm, and hide the remaining 130 hostages deeper underground. Following the October 7th massacre of 1,200 people by Hamas, Israel sees no other way to ensure the future safety of the Jewish state other than by eradicating the terror group in the Gaza Strip. EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell secured the support of 26 of the 27 European Union member states and attempted to pass the anti-Israel motion twice. On both occasions, Hungary stood alone in support of the Jewish state. The families of the hostages held by Hamas in Gaza have filed a war crimes complaint against the terror group in the International Criminal Court at The Hague. More than 100 hostage family members were met by hundreds of Dutch, Jews, and Christians who gathered at The Hague to show their support as the families submitted their petition. Over 130 hostages taken from Israel on October 7th remain captive in the Gaza Strip. Not all of them are alive. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has been declared persona non grata in the Jewish state for his comparison of Israel's war against Hamas to the Holocaust. Lula accused Israel of committing genocide in the Gaza Strip while he chose to ignore the Iranian-backed terror group's massacre of 1,200 people. Foreign Minister Yisrael Katz invited Brazil's ambassador, Frederico Mayer, to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial Museum, to tell him that Israel will not forget and we will not forgive. He said comparing Israel's just war against Hamas to the atrocities committed by Hitler and the Nazis is a disgrace and a severe anti-Semitic attack.
The Israel Defense Forces has ordered several road closures in northern Israel after the Iranian-backed Hezbollah terror group unleashed barrages of rockets and launched a weaponized drone on the Jewish state. The IDF struck targets deep inside Lebanon, including two Hezbollah weapons depots near the city of Sidon. More than 200,000 Israelis have been displaced from border communities, and the near-daily Hezbollah attacks have killed at least 16 people in northern Israel since October 7th. Families of the hostages taken from Israel on October 7th are still working to get vital medications to their loved ones held hostage by Hamas in Gaza. In the days following the Iranian-backed genocide, families of the hostages provided the Hamas-run Ministry of Health and the Red Cross with a list of medications required by the hostages. Neither organization delivered the life-saving supplies to the captives. The families then appealed to the European Union to deliver medical supplies to the hostages, along with dialysis machines for Palestinian children. Unfortunately, there is no evidence that the hostages have ever received their medications. Packages sent to Gaza were discovered by the IDF at Nasser Hospital among a stockpile of Hamas weapons. Medications with the hostages' names written on them were found discarded at the site. An Islamic cleric ascended the podium of the Belgian parliament and quoted the Quran calling for the death and kidnapping of Jews. The Belgian House of Government was in an uproar after the speaker invited the radical Muslim leader who called for Muslims to target the people of the book, a reference to the Jewish people. Belgium has become a hotbed for Islamic extremism, and in the period since October 7th, the country's nearly 30,000 Jews have reported vicious anti-Semitic attacks on their community. Victims of the October 7th Hamas genocide in Israel are demanding that the United Nations Relief and Works Agency be designated as a terror group. Nitzana Darshan Leitner, the president of the Israel Law Center, is representing the survivors of the massacre. She submitted an eight-page report to Yoav Gallant, Israel's Minister of Defense, saying UNRWA is no longer a humanitarian agency. It has become a full-scale jihadi group. Darshan Leitner pointed out that now it's clear to everyone that UNRWA has opened its doors to the Hamas terrorists in an unprecedented way. And presenting themselves as a humanitarian organization simply perpetuates a false and dangerous narrative. The U.N. agency has become a central headquarters of a terrorist organization, some of whose employees murdered innocent Jews. She explained that designating UNRWA as a terrorist group is necessary in order to prevent the next victims of terrorist violence and to expedite the collapse of the Hamas rule in the Gaza Strip. A Vatican official deeply offended Jews and Israelis by saying that Israel has led a disproportionate response against Hamas in Gaza. Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin bemoaned what he called the carnage Israel has inflicted in Gaza. Israel's embassy to the Vatican issued a formal complaint against Parolin's deplorable statements, saying that the Jewish state had been attacked on four fronts since October 7th. It said that Israel's armed forces continue to act according to international law as it fights Hamas, which has turned the Gaza Strip into the biggest terror base ever seen. Thousands of South African Christians are expected to attend nationwide prayers and public repentance for their government's decision to pursue genocide claims against the Jewish state at the International Court of Justice. Philip Rosenthal, the director of the Christian View Network, said many in the Christian community are deeply unhappy about the allegations being leveled by the South African government against Israel. He stated, we believe in Genesis 12, that this will bring a curse upon South Africa unless we distance ourselves from it. National prayers will be held on Sunday, February 25th throughout South Africa, and each group will also issue a statement denouncing South Africa's false claims in the International Court of Justice. The Sea of Galilee, Israel's largest freshwater lake, is close to reaching its maximum capacity, and Israel's water authority is considering opening the Degania Dam for the first time since 1995. Heavy rainfall has caused Lake Kinneret to rise 167 centimeters since the start of the season. This compares with just 64 centimeters last year. 
Jews believe that rain in the land of Israel is a blessing and have been praying for precipitation since the Feast of Tabernacles. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in our beautiful studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Rachel Goldberg. She's the mother of Hirsch Goldberg, who's being held captive in Gaza. Rachel, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Rachel, tell our viewers a little about Hirsch. Well, how, how did he get uh, taken hostage? What happened? So Hirsch and one of his best friends from childhood were attending the Nova Music Festival. And on sh Saturday morning, October 7th, Hamas descended upon this music festival and started a massacre that ended with 367 of the young people being killed in this camping ground. Hirsch and a friend, the friend he was with, escaped to a roadside bomb shelter that came under attack, first with hand grenades and then shooting into the room that was five by seven feet. There were 29 kids smashed in the room hiding and um, they were shot or blown up, most of them. Uh, Hirsch was critically wounded with uh, his arm from the elbow down, his left arm blown off, and was then taken captive. The friend he was with, unfortunately, was killed in that bomb shelter. And the last that we see of Hirsch is in a video that we were given that actually came from a Hamas video camera of him being loaded onto a pickup truck on the morning of October 7th with his wounded stump um, and being driven toward Gaza. You know, every day that goes by, there's just a lot of talk and support and campaigns for the hostages here in Israel. Are you feeling that around the world as well? I absolutely have been shocked and filled with inspiration by people all over the world, especially, I expect it from the Jewish world, but I have been so impressed and inspired by the Christian world, our Christian friends and neighbors from around the world who have held us with their love and supportive words and have gone above and beyond in praying for Hirsch and sending us the most inspirational and helpful messages along the way. We just saw at the Super Bowl there was a commercial for the hostages, getting people to understand that, you know, we're waiting for these men, women, children to come home. Uh, what kind of impact does that have? Hopefully it has a real impact. I don't know that everyone around the world understands that there still are 134 hostages being held from almost 20 different countries, and they are also from the Jewish faith, Christian faith, Muslim faith. There's Hindus and Buddhists still there. This is a real cross-section of humanity in the micro. You know, we just saw last week two hostages being um, saved through military force, yet there are people who are saying, no, we should negotiate a, a ceasefire. What do you think is the best way, what would be the best scenario to get our hostages out? I mean, we did see that in the end of November, when there was a pause, that we were able to get 105 people out. And I think that it's very important because we value life, Judeo-Christian, you know, belief really values life, that we have to do whatever we can to save as many people as possible. So although, as you mentioned, it is incredible that these two people were, were rescued militarily, to have two people rescued in 100 and, you know, plus days, we need to speed it up because these, these hostages just simply don't have time. You know, this is the 500th episode of Israel Now News. Our first episode was when Gilad Shalit was released. And at the time, a lot of people said releasing a thousand murderers, over a thousand murderers with blood on their hands was a mistake, that it would lead to more kidnapping. Do you think that prisoner release leads to more kidnapping? Or do you think at this point we don't have a choice? When we think back in Genesis and we see that God had compassion and mercy on Ishmael, and Ishmael was going to be the father of all of the enemies of the Jewish people. But God said, I'm a God of mercy, 
and I have to have mercy on him. And I think we, as a people, have to have mercy on our own people and figure out whatever we need to do to get them home. You know, a majority of the people who watch Israel News are are Bible-believing Christians from around the world. And I get messages all the time that they're praying for the hostages, that, you know, they they have church meetings about the hostages, that, that they're lifting them up in prayer. Is that important in this time? Oh, absolutely. And it gives us such strength to continue to breathe in our world without air. And also, we're all children of God. We can call God by different names. We're all children of God. And the prayers of our Christian friends and neighbors around the world is tremendously important and impactful. We know that it is helping us. Now, you're an American citizen. Your son, Hirsch, is an American citizen. There's a lot of criticism that the Biden administration isn't doing enough to release the hostages. Uh, Do you think there's more that they could be doing? We have felt from the beginning that the Biden administration and Congress have been extremely serious about using whatever means they can to try to bring home these now six remaining American live hostages. And remember, unfortunately, we know there are two American hostages who died in captivity and their bodies are being held. And we want the American, you know, the worldwide community, but certainly the American community to be advocating for those remaining six alive U.S. citizens who are being held. Rachel, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep praying for Hirsch and all of the remaining 134 hostages. Keep on doing the advocacy that you're doing. We feel it. We know that you support us, and it gives us tremendous strength, and it gives us tremendous hope. So thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. And now, the truth from Zion. Civilians in Gaza have been under the microscope since Hamas brutally attacked Israel on October 7, 2023. TV news programs highlight their mass evacuations. I hope that uh, the only casualties will be Hamas combatants. Uh, We are not fighting against the Palestinian civilians that they would have heeded our warning and evacuated the area. We've been warning and asking them to evacuate for two weeks. Mm. And all of this could have been avoided had they listened to those warnings and evacuated south. The New York Times Year in Pictures show images of Palestinian mothers and children crying over the loss of loved ones. But the global media, with the exception of Israel, conveniently ignore the celebrations and encouragement from Gazan civilians who support the Hamas terror organization and want to see Jews killed in Israel and around the world. While some Gazans are victims of Hamas oppression, many of them are working to aid the terror organization even going as far as keeping Jewish hostages in their private family homes. Palestinian families endorse the Hamas ideology that Jews must be killed and the state of Israel completely destroyed. Hamas was elected by the population of Gaza. We know that the majority of people living in Gaza still support Hamas and the attack on October 7th. Israel has provided civilians in Gaza safe passage through protective corridors so they can escape the fighting. Anyone who stays on the battlefield will be considered an enemy combatant. Gazans do not have to be enemy combatants to participate in the evil. Let's rewind to October 7th, the day of the massacre that claimed the lives of 1,200 innocent men, women, and children. Israelis who survived the wide-scale attacks on their kibbutz communities report that after Hamas terrorists murdered, raped, and took 240 Israeli and foreign nationals hostage, something else happened. Civilian residents of Gaza crossed the border and entered private homes of Israelis. They came to take advantage of the situation. Survivors watched and listened as Gazan looters stole anything of value, 
such as household appliances, jewelry, credit cards, cash, and clothing. One woman reported that an entire Gazan family entered her home, heated up meals from her refrigerator, and even lounged on her couch watching Netflix while she and her family hid inside their safe room. She told Jewish media sources that she knew the Gazans were eating because she smelled the food that she had prepared the day before. When Jews from southern Israel were taken hostage and transferred into Gaza, they were met by hundreds of locals who came to cheer the terrorists and to join in on the humiliation. Even Palestinian children taunted the new arrivals, calling a young Israeli a filthy Jew. There is overwhelming video evidence and eyewitness testimony documenting the evil barbaric acts committed by both Hamas terrorists and average Palestinians against Israeli soldiers and civilians. The first group of Israeli hostages were officially released during a ceasefire on Friday, November 24, 2023. Gazan civilians showed up by the hundreds to jeer, intimidate, and shout profanities at the traumatized innocents who had been sitting in dark rooms and tunnels for 48 days prior to their release. The videos of Gazans who willingly took part in and continue to participate in the dehumanization of Israelis should erase any doubts about the role of the so-called Palestinian civilians in the conflict. They celebrate, cheer, and praise the bloodthirsty atrocities committed by Hamas terrorists. Many Gazans who in the past received life-saving medical procedures for themselves or their children in Israeli hospitals admitted that despite the free medical services and the professional courteous treatment provided by Israeli doctors and nurses, they still hate Israel. They continue to blame the Jewish people for the difficulties Palestinians experience living in Gaza under the iron-fisted regime of Hamas. As the IDF continues to protect the people of the Holy Land, Jews, Arabs, and Christians by fighting Hamas, the world must understand that Israel is pursuing terrorists, not civilians. That distinction can become cloudy when civilians voluntarily enter the battlefield becoming combatants and enemies of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Up next, the ICEJ report from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. I want to tell you that this is the day when the church needs to stand with Israel, like Moses, like Aaron, like her, on the mountain to pray for a clear victory of Israel against those forces of darkness. Since 1980, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem has been a voice of Christian support for Israel and connected the global church to the land of the Bible. Headquartered in Jerusalem, the ICEJ has taken action to stand with Israel by caring for Holocaust survivors, helping Jewish families return home to Israel, providing bomb shelters, fighting anti-Semitism around the world, and by inviting Christians to discover Israel for themselves. Dear friends, I'm coming to you from the Gaza envelope, from Kibbutz Be'eri, the place that probably was worst hit by those atrocities of October 7. 10% of the population of this kibbutz was, were killed, mutilated, raped, and it was a day where the President of Israel said it was the darkest day in the history of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Now the Word of God tells us that the battle in which we are engaging, it is not a battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers in the heavenly places. And what we have seen in Kibbutz Beri was a demonic manifestation of the spirit of Amalek. It was p hitting people that were peace-loving residents of this community, like the following story. אין יותר ממנה, הייתה מסיעה, אנשים עד לעזה, היו אוכלים מצלה, שותים, ופה היא מצאה את מותה. פשוט לא שרפו לה את הבית ורצחו אותה. ומה שאני אומר, חמאס, דאעש, נאצים, הם לא בוכלים, אין חברים. הם רוצים להרוג את כל היהודים ואת כל הנוצרים בעולם, זה האמונה שלהם וזה מה שהם רוצים. 
What you hear here, it's a rebirth of the spirit of Amalek in our time. I don't think this spirit of Amalek, of hating the Jews, wanting to annihilate the Jewish people, were more powerful manifested than on October 7. I want to call upon our prayer partners from around the world to understand, even though you see the physical destruction of that house, we are not, a, we are not waging a, a physical war. Our fight is not against flesh and blood, blood but against demonic powers that are operating over there in Gaza with organizations like Hamas, like Islamic Jihad, that have one target to annihilate the Jewish people. This spirit needs to be addressed in prayer. We need you to speak out to your communities about the atrocities that were taking place here in this land. And it's a time where the church needs to wake up, where they need to stand up. Not only confessions are enough today, where we say we love Israel, but actions are needed. Today a praying church is being needed around the world. Please join our various prayer initiatives for either the Global Prayer Gathering, the Rosh Chodesh Prayer 24-7 campaign. Israel needs today your prayer more than ever. Thank you so much for standing with us and I look forward to see you and to welcome you in one of our prayer meetings. God bless you here from the envelope of Gaza. After Hamas brutally attacked Israel on October the 7th, 2023, the ICEJ has been actively standing with Israel and her people through advocacy and urgently needed aid projects. Now is the time for Christians to turn their love for Israel and the Jewish people into real action as never before. Your donation will help deliver bomb shelters to at-risk areas, provide necessary supplies for first responders, care for evacuees with food, shelter, clothing, and trauma care, and will eventually help rebuild these devastated communities. Visit icejusa.tv to donate online or call 1-800-910-6355 and give your generous gift today. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Rebecca Roberts. And I'm Yochanan El Rome, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Join us again next week for all of your Israel updates.